Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 27th, 2018. This first article is from my friend Dave N. from Canada. Thank you, Dave, for this article. This is from Recode.net. And as usual, all of the articles I talk about, there will be links to the articles that I'm talking about down in the description box below. Amazon Go, a high-tech version of 7-Eleven, will finally open on Monday with no checkout lines and no cashiers. And I'll just read a little bit of the article here. It's got some uh, neat pictures and everything. Amazon's store of the future has been five years in the making, but the unveiling is just about here. Amazon Go, the company's first brick and mortar convenience store, will open to the public on Monday on the ground floor of Amazon's new headquarters on 7th Avenue in Seattle. Though the unveiling will take place about a year later than the company originally planned, it will still be met with the great with great interest because of the store's unique technology that Amazon believes can make checkout lines a thing of the past. On the surface, the store resembles what a 7-Eleven might look like if it had a high-end makeover and was laid out in part like a, I don't even know what this is, pret a manger sandwich shop. That must be a place um, similar to like a Vindeteria or something like that. I don't know if you remember them, but in the 50s and 60s, we had these things. They were uh, restaurants. They were more or less Vindeteriors. I think they had like maybe a couple people working there that would like clean up the trays and wash the dishes but as far as serving yourself you just went over to a little uh, window and put some coins in there and you got your sandwich or your apple or your orange or your drink or whatever we call those vindeterias so um, I don't know if Preta Manger sandwich shop is similar to that or not but I'm guessing and uh, it was dreamt up by the same tech powerhouse that had previously made one click buying and two day shipping the industry norm so uh, yeah, you basically just walk in there, and I guess you're going to. Uh, there will be a few people around. There will be one person to stop, you know, to stop you at the door and make sure you're a, an Amazon Prime member, and then to make sure you have the app on your phone. This is going to work from an app from your phone, and then as you just walk around the shop and take stuff off the shelves, it will uh, be able to tell what you took and then bill you accordingly. Um, I don't know what the mistake level will be, but I would imagine if they've got a learning algorithm about it or something like that. Um, there may be a little bit more mistakes than a normal human grocery store at first, but then as it learns, uh, it may end up yeah, being less mistakes than with human cashiers. So who knows where that's going to go and if they're going to have one. Uh, uh, if this one's successful, maybe they will end up having it at some of the major cities like uh, New York, Chicago, and L.A. I think this is probably going to be their test bed. And next up, this is from Business Insider, and this is just one of those other stories that you just can't believe that people are just this crazy. But Crockpot is forced to defend itself after a heartbreaking plot twist on This Is Us. Now, uh, I don't have a television set, haven't had a television set in a long time, but evidently this is a show on NBC, and it says a heartbreaking accident on NBC's This Is Us resulted in viewers threatening to throw away their Crockpots. A heartbreaking plot development on NBC's This Is Us had fans of the show threatening to throw away their crockpots in the most recent episode which aired on Tuesday. A faulty crockpot slow cooker left unattended leads to a dish towel catching on fire. With the knowledge that the death of Jack, the Pearson family patriarch, is inevitable and fast approaching, viewers were left terrified by what the next episode would bring as the kitchen was engulfed in flames at the end of the episodes. Many fans of the show blamed the crockpot for the tragedy and said they would take action against the slow cookers in their lives. So, People, this is just a fictional plot twist. They could have had it just as easily been a toaster or a can opener or any kind of electrical appliance. It just happened to be a crock pot. But um, I'm kind of halfway thinking, too, is uh, with uh, lawyers on staff for all of these shows, you would think a lawyer would probably see this coming from a mile away and just say, if you're, if you're going to have it be a crock pot type of device that catches the curtains on fire, just call it a, a Doc, Smith's crock, Doc Smith's slow cooker or a... a you know, Williams slow cooker, just give it a generic name that has nothing to do with any actual slow cooker or any actual brand and just make it a fictitious slow cooker. I imagine in the past they certainly will be doing that, but yeah, just to let you know how people can just go off on a tangent. I've seen so much of that on social networks, either based on a YouTube video where somebody says something happened with a, a certain name. And it may even be true. I mean, I'm, I imagine you could take any kind of electronic device that's on a kitchen uh, regular kitchen cabinet and somewhere sometime it has caused damage to someone and uh, then everybody else just goes off and freaks out and says I'll never buy that again I'm, I'm boycotting the company blah 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 so anyway that's my opinion on that and then last up this is about um, 
This is from Gizmodo, and this is NASA's, uh, if we'll keep hopping around here, stay still, Paige. NASA runs first successful, successful first tests of compact nuclear reactor for Mars base. Now, this isn't necessarily just going to be for Mars base. We are talk they're talking, too, about um, exploring Titan in the future. Uh, we're going to need a long-term power source, and if we go back to the moon, they're still talking about before we even do go back to Mars, they want to test uh, some of the equipment. Uh, when the astronauts can be just close by on the moon rather than being real far away if something should go wrong. So I can kind of kind of see that. So uh, according to the article, if humans have any hope of sticking around on Mars for longer than a few days, they'll need some form of power to sustain themselves. A successful test in Nevada has demonstrated that that power could be nuclear. NASA and the U.S. Department of Energy successfully performed their initial tests on a miniature nuclear power system. We'll try more a more developed test in March, Reuters reports. Months long testing began in November at the Energy Department's Nevada National Security Site with an eye toward providing energy for future astronautic and robotic missions in space and on the surface of Mars, the Moon, or other solar system destinations. Basically, what it's going to end up being probably is just a giant heat generator either to um, uh, produce electricity from various uh, bimetal um, type of devices or even maybe produce some steam or something like that. There will probably be... Uh, several different designs. So uh, those are the problems NASA's Kilopower project hopes to solve with a compact nuclear fission reactor that uses the uranium-235 reactor core, roughly the size of a paper towel roll. The reactor would provide 10 kilowatts of power, enough to run two average households continuously for at least 10 years, according to NASA release. Four units would be required to operate an outpost, it continues. So, and uh, yeah, the article continues from there, and there's some nice looking photographs and stuff, but yeah, 10 kilowatts of power, and it's uh, it's sustainable power. You can't necessarily, with all the dust in Mars, count on the uh, um, solar panels, plus the fact that Mars is twice as far away as Earth, uh, almost, so you have to uh, think about the fact that you don't get as much sunlight in the first case, and you have to uh, contend with the dust storms and things like that. I mean, some of the dust storms where the dust is lifted up in the atmosphere, um, you may end up not having good sun for even uh, six months at a time or longer, so this would actually solve that problem. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody, and I will catch you next week.